So this equation is asking us to find the coordinates of the orthocenter. Coordinates of the orthocenter for this triangle. So an orthocenter, if you remember, an orthocenter means that it is the um, the place where the altitudes meet, right? Orthocenter is the place where the altitudes meet. Yes? Point of congruency of the altitudes. Mm -hmm. So the point of congruency of the altitude. So what we need to do is we need to find the altitudes in this triangle, and then we need to find where they meet. Now, all three of the altitudes are going to meet in the same place. So really, there's a little bit of uh, strategy that goes into this because you want to find the, the two best ones, the two easiest ones to find. So let's first just kind of visualize what the ortho or what the um, altitudes are here. So I'm going to do the altitudes in purple. So remember what an altitude is. It's from one side. It's from one vertex to the opposite side. It's the shortest distance to the opposite side. So a lot of times what you have to do is draw in, like extend the sides of the triangle. Now this triangle happens to be a right triangle. So this actually is going to be really easy to do because, because I can already see what my point is going to be because this line, this purple, uh, this altitude that's coming from the point three, or sorry, nine comma two, it's going to be just the same line right here. That's going to be my altitude because it's this is already a 90 degree angle. Likewise, this point right here, it's going to go straight through that same point as well. So I already have my two points. Anytime you have a right triangle, the orthocenter is always going to be the point right by the 90 degree angle, the vertex. So this right here, just to, sh just to kind of prove it to you, if you drew in this orth, if you drew in this altitude from, from that, it's obviously going to start at that point, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to go like that. It's going to also go through that same point. So that was an easy problem. Let's do a harder one. Yeah. Okay, here's one that's not quite as easy. So this is this is my triangle. I've got the coordinates written out, negative two, zero here. All right, so what I need to do is I need to find two, really I only need two altitudes. And again, I'm gonna do the altitudes in purple. And so remember what an altitude is. I'm just gonna rough, I'm gonna rough draw it in here. An altitude is gonna start at a vertex. Whoops. It's gonna start at a vertex and go through the opposite side perpendicular. In other words, it's going to be the closest distance to the opposite side. So I'm kind of eyeballing it right here. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to eyeball this next one. I've got this nice little app on my computer, so I'm looking at this red side that I'm going, that red side right there, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to make it... Oh, Can look. I make it 90? Like I think it make, right I think now? maybe that this app actually does it for me. Oh. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this right here. Here, let me see if that let me see if it always does that like that. So I'm going to start at this point. Maybe that's what it automatically does on this app. I don't know. Let's find out. If it works, what's going to happen is, oh, yeah, look at that. It worked nicely. Okay, so this app works, okay, for that. But that's what I'm doing. I'm making these angles down here. I'm making those 90-degree angles right there. That's 90, that's 90, and that's 90. Now can't just like eyeball it and guess. I have yeah. to actually find the exact coordinates and that's going to require some algebra. So the algebra goes like this. I'm first going to take this first, I'm going to highlight this line for you. I'm going to take this line right there, that upper line. I'm going to find the slope of that line. I'll do this in green. The slope of that line, remember it's rise over run, and the slope of that line would be um, 9 minus 6, that's the y coordinates over negative 4 minus 5. So that is 3 over negative 9, which is negative 1 third. That's the slope of that line. Well, what's the slope of this, of this line have to be? If that's 90 degrees to it, what's the slope of two lines that are perpendicular to each other? Do 
remember what this relationship between perpendicular slopes. So that's the slope of my yellow line. Oh wait, isn't it um, the opposite reciprocal? Uh huh. So the so the slope of the green line, slope of the green line. I'll say m of m sub g. Slope of the green line is going to be three. positive three. Well, if that's the slope of that line, and this is the point on that line, what can I use to find the equation of that line? I'm going to use point slope form. Y minus Y sub 1, remember this, equals the slope times X minus X sub 1. Mm -hmm. I'll write that out for you. Y minus Y sub 1 equals M times X minus X sub 1. That's the point slope formula. Here's my slope and here's my point, X1, Y1. See how I just plugged them straight in to get that equation? Yeah. So that's your point slope formula. So there's one equation. Okay. Now I can pick either one for my other equation, but I'm going to pick um, I'm going to pick this line right here just because. So what's the slope of that line, right there? Well, the slope is going to be what rise six minus zero, right? Six minus zero over run. 5 minus negative 2. Be careful with your signs. People tend to make mistakes on that. Yeah. Right? Just use parentheses and put subtraction in there and, you know, don't try to do it too quick. So that's 6 over 7. That's the slope of that line. Well, what's the slope of this other line going to be then? I'll do this one in orange. What's the slope of this orange line going to be? the slope of the orange line is equal to the negative reciprocal of that light blue line that I shaded in. So negative seven, negative seven, six, very good. Now if that slope of that line is negative seven, six, and that line goes through that point, what's the equation gonna be? Y, y minus, minus negative four. No, y minus nine. Y minus Y, right? Y1 minus, oh. or Y minus Y1 equals the slope, negative 7, 6 times X minus, be careful with your signs here. So then wait, so if we this one, is Yeah, did I write the other one wrong? You're right, I did. Thank oh. you for pointing that out. This one's wrong. Dang it. Hopefully, I'll make a point in that video beforehand. Yeah, this one I did that wrong. It should be y minus 0, x minus negative 2. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, don't make stupid mistakes like I just did. Okay, so my two equations. So now I have to find out where those two lines intersect. And how do I find a point? Do I have to worry about that purple line? No. Do I even need the purple line? I don't. It would just be a waste of time because yeah. I know they're all three going to intersect at the same place. So all I need is those two lines. So I write y equals 3 times x plus 2. That's one equation. And the other equation is y minus 9 equals negative 7, 6 times x plus 4. And to solve these equations, I can just plug. I can use either system of equations. I can use... Um, a matrices, if I remember how to do matrices, I could use um, elimination method. There's all those methods. I'm just going to plug this straight into here. Just because I don't, just because I'm being lazy. So I'm going to just write 3 times x plus 2 minus 9. Actually, I might as well distribute that while I do it, right? Mm -hmm. 3x plus 6 minus 9. So I plug that into there equals negative 7, 6 times x plus 4. <coughs> so now I'm going to do my favorite trick of all, which is to, well, first I'm going to give myself some room by writing it up here. So this is going to be 3x negative 6, or positive 6 minus 9 is negative 3, right? Equals negative 7, 6 times x plus 4. I'm going to clear the fraction. I'm going to clear that 6 out of there by multiplying everything by 6. So distribute it here, here, and here. So that's 18x minus 18 equals negative 7 times x plus 4. 
just makes it easier, a little yeah, algebra nice. trick. So then I've got 18x minus 18 equals negative 7x minus 28. Move the x's over to one side, so add 7x, that's 25x. Subtract 18, or sorry, add 18 from both sides, so that would be negative 10. Is that right? x equals negative 10 over 25, which equals, divide by 5, negative 2 over 5. Negative 2 fifths, hey, that looks about right. Negative 2 fifths? Yeah. Right, so negative 2 fixes, tip fifths is my x coordinate, and my y coordinate, plug that back in right here. Let me clear some space and do that. So y equals 3 times negative 2 fifths plus 2. So that means negative 6 fifths plus 6. Negative 6 fifths is negative 1 and a fifth plus 6. So I'm subtracting 1 and a fifth from 6. So I have 4 and 4 fifths. Four and four fifths. Does that seem about right? One, two, three, four. Hey! Four and four fifths. How about that? It's good when it looks right. And it's good when you're using your. So that point right there, again, clear it up and draw it in there. This point, which is again called the orthocenter, is negative two fifths, comma, four and four fifths. Done.